Welcome to Beside the Burn for Tuesday the 14th of December. We're on day 17 of Finding Hope Under Bethlehem Skies, our adventure through the book of Ruth during Advent. A couple of Sundays ago, we thought about how uh, this particular love story in this book of Ruth is really a story about kindness or chesed, the God's love, the, the, the steadfast love, the loving kindness. And that word chesed that gets translated in lots of different ways, loving kindness, steadfast love, faithful love, mercy. And Robin Ham today in the, the reading that on day 17 uses a word that I didn't use on that particular Sunday. He talks about covenant love. And this describes the relationship that we have with God. Whenever we come to God, we enter into a covenant with him and he enters into a covenant with us. A covenant is really a a promise, I suppose. And we've seen covenants already in the finding Jesus in the Old Testament, in the book of Genesis. We've come across several covenants where God made a covenant with Noah after the flood and sent the rainbow as a sign of that covenant. Remember whenever he dramatically entered into the covenant with Abraham and Abraham was to bring the animals for sacrifice and they were split in two and God walked through the middle of the animals and Abraham was put into a sleep so that he didn't because he couldn't keep that and he looked forward to the day when God would send someone who would be able to walk in his place and get into the covenant with God. And we're in that position today where Jesus Christ comes and he creates the covenant and and is able to answer our side of the covenant where we fail and where we mess up. So now we have this covenant love between Ruth and Naomi. And we know that in the New Testament, Jesus Christ brings the new covenant in his blood. And so we're looking forward with hope under these Bethlehem skies to Jesus coming and bringing his chesed, his covenant love to us so that we can uh, trust in him and we can find hope in him. So today we see Boaz's response to the bold, confident move that Ruth made yesterday. And we're going to read together from uh, chapter 3, verses 10 and 11, uh, just two verses today. But it shows us what Boaz is thinking as he looks at Ruth and as he tries to tease out what's happening here with God's love in the midst of this story. So in verse 10, we read, The Lord bless you, my daughter, he replied. This kindness is greater than that which you have showed earlier. You have not run after the younger men, whether rich or poor. Now, there's a lot in this particular verse. First of all, notice the way that Boaz responds to Ruth. He calls her my daughter. Ruth has presented herself not as the Moabite or the foreigner or the widow, but as a servant of Boaz. And Boaz immediately reciprocates that title and replaces it with my daughter. This is a a loving, kind relationship that Boaz now sees with Ruth. And he's not prepared for her to be a servant to him. She is going to be part of the family. He offers her a blessing, the Lord bless you. And this is similar to the blessing that Naomi offered to Boaz whenever uh, Ruth came back and told her that she had been in his field. And Naomi said, oh, the Lord bless him because he has not stopped showing his kindness to us. And here in this blessing, we've got this kindness again, this head from God. And On the initial reading, and I suppose I often looked at this and thought that this kindness is greater than that which you showed earlier. And I look at this as Boaz um, saying, well, look, you've now asked me to marry you. That is very, very kind. You've chosen me above all the younger men and uh, whether they're rich or poor and you've chosen me and that's a wonderful kindness. But I don't think that is what Boaz is actually saying here. What Boaz is saying is this kindness 
is greater than that which you've showed earlier. What was shown earlier? Well, Ruth committed herself to Naomi and came back from Moab to this land of Bethlehem and stuck with Naomi, showed her the covenant love. And that's God's love for us, that he sticks with us. He doesn't abandon us. He comes whenever it is difficult to come with us. He is there with us. And now this kindness, this new kindness, is again Ruth showing kindness to Naomi. Not, not to Boaz. So Ruth could have gone after anyone that she pleased in this whole process. She could have come back to Bethlehem and spotted a young, handsome, rich man in the town and decided that's the one I want to marry. And she could have gone to him and accepted a marriage proposal and lived happily ever after. But... In showing kindness to Naomi, she sticks within the rules of the kinsman redeemer. She chooses Boaz because Boaz is going to be able to redeem the land back as well and produce an heir. If she'd gone after somebody else, then she was basically cutting her ties with Naomi. So all of this kindness shows the commitment, the covenant that she is in with uh, Naomi. And it reflects the covenant that we enter into with God, where God does not abandon us, but sticks with us through thick and thin and is with us at all times. And what we find here is that Boaz is saying, and now my daughter again, he calls her that, don't be afraid. That don't be afraid is a phrase that we find quite often in the nativity scene in Bethlehem. Whenever Jesus is born, everyone's frightened by what's taking place. The shepherds on the hills, whenever the angels appear, are frightened. And the angels say, do not be afraid. Um, Mary is uncertain and she's told, do not be afraid. Joseph is uncertain and he's told, do not be afraid. So again, we've got this... um, precursor of what's coming not to be afraid uh, and what's taking place here Ruth had plenty to be afraid about if Boaz had rejected her then their great plan had come to an end and where was there going to be any sort of security absolutely and um, so do not be afraid is being said here and uh, also I I forgot to say in that last verse uh, where Boaz says, you have not run after, this idea of running after the the younger men. That's a phrase that's often used whenever Israel or whenever people go after other gods. That's the type of commitment here that you reject the, the one true God and you go after another God. And the idea would have been here that she could have rejected Naomi and gone after her own plan, but she chose not to. So just wanted to say that uh, while we were looking at this. So don't be afraid. Boaz is going to do what she's asked and redeem her. And then he makes a statement about Ruth. All my fellow townsmen know that you are a woman of a noble character. And this is significant that she's a woman of noble character. And um, Robin goes into it in a little bit of detail here. But basically... Ruth is a personification of Proverbs chapter 31, the woman of noble character. Indeed, she's the only woman in the Bible that is described as a woman of noble character. She's the only one who meets up to the standards that are set in Proverbs. So in Proverbs 31 and verse 10, a wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. And Boaz realises this and realises that Ruth is the one. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. And Ruth meets all of these criteria And we have this wonderful picture of Ruth as the woman of noble character, as the wife of noble character. So then as we read the grey box on page um, 51, as we journey through Ruth, we become captivated by the kindness of the characters in the story. And perhaps our thoughts go to another young woman who was willing to submit her life to God, Mary, the mother of Jesus. 
These women in flesh, the steadfast kindness of God to us. And in doing so, they give us a glimpse of Christ. Pray that we will do likewise. So the song today is Mary's song. And it's a wonderful song and it's really based upon uh, Luke chapter 1 and verses 46 to 56. Because in Luke chapter 1 verses 46 to 56, uh, Mary is responding to the news that she's going to give birth to Jesus Christ. And she responds to the news by singing a song It's called Mary's Song. And that's what today's song is based on, those words of Mary. Now, this song is often referred to as the Magnificat uh, because in the Latin it begins with my soul glorifies the Lord or my soul magnifies the Lord. So the Magnificat is the magnificence of God but um, glorifying him and magnifying him. And uh, in the song... Um, You'll hear the chorus each time. My soul magnifies the Lord. My soul magnifies the Lord. Holy is his name. So you can imagine Mary singing these verses, singing these words, and you can read them yourself in in Luke chapter 1. And you see, Ruth submits her will to Naomi, and Mary is submitting her will to God. And the result on both occasions is a son who brings hope. A son who brings hope to the world and to the individual as well. Also today, I'm going to give you a bonus song because whenever I'd listen to this one, YouTube suggested that I would listen to a song called Elizabeth. And it is by um, Keith and Kristen Getty and also uh, Ellie Holcomb. And it's a wonderful song that uh, Kristen and Ellie sing together about Elizabeth. And Elizabeth is another uh, character in the story who uh, sings a song at being told um, that she is going to give birth in her old age. And this promised child is going to be the forerunner of Christ, John the Baptist. And it's a wonderful song that I just encourage you to listen to as well and to think about Elizabeth and the position that she has in the whole story, again with a child being born and the hope that comes from that child. So two songs to listen to today and uh, may God bless us through them. So let's pray together. Lord God, what wonderful stories of hope today that in trusting you and um, submitting to you and being ready to offer kindness in these situations that your will is done. Lord, may we know your great loving kindness and may we be prepared to submit to you so that we can share that love with others, that we don't seek our own rights, but we prefer others above ourselves and see them coming to faith in you. Lord, we thank you for Jesus Christ and the hope that we have in him. Remind us of that hope today, Lord as we follow you and worship you. Amen.